morning, guys. Good evening, Abraham. <laughs> well, dear, today's announcement. Still not quite sure how I got here, but thank you anyways. How's it going, Eberhard? Noah here. It's nice to see you all. All right, guys. This is not the morning announcements. We know you've all been waiting for this amazing class historian speech. So let's take a journey back in time. Do you guys remember grade 10? Everything felt so new back then. There was the first filthy Friday. COVID-19. Masks. There was the first host party. The first morning of regret afterwards. Great time. We also had Mr. Bueller, who's far too smart to be teaching us, but nonetheless, we were lucky to have him. Grade 10 also marked a prosperous year for tomato basil, as half of the collective grade 10 income flooded into their pockets. Us, the innocent, unsuspecting grade 10s discovering the power of bad spending habits, but mmm, poutine. In grade 10, Eberhardt won six city championships, with three of those being from volleyball, two from track, and one from cross country. Not bad, guys. Not bad. We'll get to the academics later, because, let's be honest, who really studied in grade 10? <laughs> Julia Martin. <laughs> During our first year playing football, we didn't really realize the life lessons that we were learning. Ah, I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was a cold autumn afternoon. Winter was approaching. Me and the D-line boys were out drilling hits with Coach Matt, who, if you know, you know. Misha was starting to get a little bit on his nerves. For reference, Coach Matt's motto was, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. So there we watched as Misha prepared to hit him, you know. He grit his teeth and he started accelerating. He was glorious while he ran. His hopes were high as the sun. He was like Icarus when he ran, ready to show the world the strength he had within him. Only, upon impact, physics did not let him go. He instantly flew backwards and exclaimed, Oh my god, he's like a wall! <laughs> yeah, that's the whole story. There's no lesson here. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. That was beautiful. Looking forward to grade 11, things started to get a little bit more interesting. Junior highs began to intermingle, and we changed principles now hosting the wonderful Mr. Sagriotis, who's very kind and really, really loves the color orange. Maybe a bit too much. Grade 11 also saw an interesting trend called devious licks. And no, it was not where people went around licking things, but if you know, you know. The cucumber slices around the school also began to make an appearance. As did locker room haircuts, leaving our A babes looking fresh as ever unlike the locker rooms where they happened. On the topic of locker rooms, can we please get our custodians a raise? Holy... Grade 11 was also the year where everyone's hopes and dreams started to get crushed just a little bit. For some of us, that reality hit in Physics 20, which had no business being possibly the hardest course ever. But not all hope was lost. Through thick and thin, we had Mr. Weegly to lighten things up. Every time we felt sad about our physics grade, You'd be snapped out of your sadness by a nearby nerf war, or a lesson on the very true, very true, flat earth theory. If you guys don't believe me, I'll just bait you afterwards, okay? That's pretty awesome. It doesn't change your grade, but it definitely made us feel better. And even if you didn't, the Christmas physics caroling must have lightened your spirits, even if it interrupted your reading comprehension test. And let's not forget grade 11 chemistry. Those sunny days, titration labs with Mr. Oborn, which, if you were an outsider looking in, might have resembled tensions similar to the Cuban Missile Crisis. But have no fear, we were learning guys. If you thought escaping Guantanamo Bay was hard, try being the second person to leave Miss Gillis's physics class. And while we've gone from Eberhardt to Cuba in this speech, we went from Eberhardt to France in grade 11, a chance for our French immersion students to use what they've been learning. It became quite evident that all our French education had paid off when Alex Hillier ordered us five large pizzas instead of five slices of pizza. But at least everyone got lunch, even if it was over a garbage bin on the side of the street. And maybe our finance skills also weren't up to par when we thought 50 euros for five slices of pizza was reasonable. For those of you not familiar with global economics, at the current exchange rate, that's about 13.7 tomato basil poutines. In order to work off that pizza, our athletes brought their A-game. That's A for Eberhardt. 
or effort. In grade 11, we saw six more city banners, two of them from cross country, another one from volleyball, of course, and the last three from rugby, wrestling, and the dive team, which even managed to win against all odds against all the other schools that were not there. <laughs> not bad, guys. Not bad. In grade 11, we also saw the creation and prompt dissolution of our golf club. The only thing shorter than this golf club's lifespan is my drive. We can't forget about Eberhardt's interscholastic athletics. Social action clubs' intramural sports are no joke. The only time our stands were ever packed was for dodgeball. And really, we all know everyone was just there to watch Kyle from behind. <laughs> and in grade 11, we somehow got Philip as an announcer. And against all odds, Noah joined him in grade 12. But together, they formed the best bromance Eberhardt has seen thus far. We certainly got better when I showed up. Orange, you glad I came? Is it orange? But we weren't the only ones making noise. Shout out to our incredible band program. These fellows received a gold award in symphonic band and jazz band. And the jazz band also received the most outstanding jazz combo trophy. As you can see, the orange doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> the orange, guys? <laughs> yeah, their tunes playing in the foyer will certainly not be forgotten. Just like that one Remembrance Day ceremony, which also played some unforgettable heavy metal tunes. Moving over to grade 12 here, let's peel, <laughs> peel along, you know, because it's an orange. To our final year here at Abe, guys, this is where the orange gets juicy, all right? Grade 12 is a year where, for the first half, everyone realizes grades matter. So they become highly disciplined students. This resulted in the highest math diploma average this school has seen in the last eight years. You guys are some smart oranges. Well, <laughs> then comes winter and spring. And as the people will begin to solidify their plans, the effort dissipates to lower levels than ever. As we can see in our AP Calculus class, which averaged roughly 15% on their last unit test. Good job, guys. Also good job. On the athletics front, we're also currently seeing some elite activity at track. Philip pulled his hamstring in the 4 by one We've already seen five city banners. Three banners from volleyball, one from diving, with other schools there this time, and another from cross country. You guys just don't stop. Speaking of sports, this year we saw the creation of an esports team, which sadly didn't make it past three weeks, but that's besides the point. We also saw the creation of the chess club, of which Philip here is in fact the captain of Frizzy, huh? <laughs> Also, not to mention the introduction of the curling team, which found massive success. They had so many people try out, they actually had to bump some people out. Come on, it's the only non-orange joke. <laughs> Eberhardt was the only school with more than five members. We outnumbered every other school combined, and we definitely beat them in a fight. In grade 12, we discovered the real lore of William Eberhardt. How the school was founded and built solely by Mr. Marshall himself, brick by brick, starting from that third floor calculus class. On the topic of calculus, I remember opening my calc book for the first time this year. And there I saw help messages from Mr. Marshall's class of 1987. <laughs> but, just as each textbook in the school had a culture, so does Abe, and we're quite proud of it. But really, what makes Eberhardt so special? We believe it's the people here. The chemistry. Yeah, the chemistry. Sometimes a little too much on those third floor couches, huh? Or sometimes not enough chemistry to get over some disagreements in social class. Sa Sasha and Cheyenne, I'm looking at you guys. <laughs> but at the end of the day, somehow it works out, okay? <laughs> really, what other school can say they have the same mascot as the Philadelphia Flyers? A red-bearded creature from the depths of the East Coast. Mr. Popvin, thank you for your service. <laughs> like William Eberhardt, partially because there's no other school that wears orange. Don't say Francis, that covers a brown, not orange. Well, there's no other school quite like Eberhardt because of you guys. The students and staff have made this three years for us like no others, so thank you guys. And thank you so much to our grad committee and teachers for organizing this amazing graduation. It's safe to say that this class is certainly one of the classes of all time, and that's all thanks to you. Thank you all for being here. That's all for this year's announcements. Have a great day, Eberhard.